Hello, I believe, fingers crossed, all things being equal and fair. Tech gods with us, we are broadcasting, streaming live on YouTube right now. Please do let me know in the chat if you can hear and see me okay. And if everything is going smoothly, that would be hugely appreciated so that I can make sure that we are all right. Uh, welcome to Bright Green's second election night or day, uh, election full stop uh, results live stream. Uh, I am going to be over the next bit of time going through the results that have come in over the last 24 hours and having some very, very special guests to bring some insights and analysis as to what's been going on uh, across the country. Before I delve into any of that, though, I have one thing to request of you, which is that you please scroll down right now and hit the subscribe button. It means that you won't miss out on any of the things that we're putting out in the future. Please also do hit like. It means the video will appear in more people's feeds. And of course, let us know where you're joining from in the chat uh, chat box, as well as any comments and questions. Happy to take questions throughout the show. So it has been quite a 24 hours since polls closed uh, last night at 10 p.m. I'm aware that's not 24 hours, that's about 20 hours, but I've had two hours of sleep. So things are going to be a little bit ropey on this stream, but hopefully with your help, love and support, we will get through it. So I'm going to first of all kick off with a brief rundown of everything that's been happening in the last uh, 20 hours of British existence. So we've had local elections in England in over, well, in over 200 councils, over 8,000 councillors have been elected. Votes are still being counted across the country, but we have a pretty clear picture now of what has happened across the whole country. The Tories have had a disaster. They have been absolutely wiped out in local government across England, and there have been three parties that have made substantial gains, the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Greens. And it's the Greens that we're going to be focusing on for the most part tonight. So before I came on the stream, I had a little look and the Greens uh, were on around 180 net gains before I started streaming. That's really, really significant. In 2019, the last time these seats were up for elections, the Greens gained 198 seats. That was record-breaking results for the party. Now, the fact that the Greens are currently on 180, with many results still to come, suggests that the Greens could once again break records, could have an unprecedented night of elections, all alongside defending those 200 seats the party gained in 2019. Now, I'm going to now be talking through in a little bit more depth, what those results have looked like so far. Before I do that, just to let you know, I've got three incredibly special guests who are going to be joining me throughout this live stream. So in about 10 minutes time, I'm going to be joined by Martin Butcher, who is one of the Greens who has just been elected today to East Hertfordshire Council. That's a council you might have, might have heard a bit about today, given the uh, interesting results that have taken place in that council. I'll then later on be joined by Ellie Chowns, who you may know as a former Green Party MEP and a councillor in Herefordshire. And at around seven o'clock, uh, I think, I'll be joined by Zach Polanski, the Green Party of England deputy leader. With those three people, I'll be talking about the results in specific areas. And I'll also be talking to Zach about the whole shebang, everything that's been happening across the country. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them in the chat and I'll try and get to them as many of them as possible. And we've got 30 people watching now. I reckon we can hit 50 by the end of the stream. Hit like, hit subscribe and share this on your socials so that more people will see it. So I'm going to do a really rapid fire breakdown as to what has happened in relation to the Green Party since polls closed yesterday. As I said, it's been possibly a record breaking night for the Greens. And there's one way that it's definitely been record breaking so far. The Green Party has, for the first time ever in its history, gained majority control of a council. That council is mid-Suffolk, and the Greens have gained 12 seats there, going to become the majority party. There are 34 seats on the council, and the Greens have won a staggering 24. Just 10 councillors on mid-Suffolk council now aren't Greens. It's a huge, unprecedented result, and it means that mid-Suffolk will have a council that is run 
solely by the Greens for the first time of anyone anywhere ever in the country. But also it means that the Greens will be able to implement their programme the way they want to in a way that's not hampered by negotiations with other parties. Really significant moment for the Green Party that a local authority, uh, the voters of it, have given full uh, endorsement to the Greens. That's never happened before. That's the main flagship headline you'll have seen throughout the day. If you're watching the news bulletins, if you're reading stuff online, Mid-Suffolk, Green, Majority Control, historic moment for the party. But it's not the only historic thing that has happened today. There's been loads of results which have broken records, which have happened for the first time and which transform the relationship between the Green Party and voters and the, um, the scale of Green Party success in the country. So let's kick off also in Suffolk with East Suffolk Council. <clears throat> now, in East Suffolk, the Greens made 11 gains overnight. Absolutely huge. They went from five councillors to 16 councillors in East Suffolk. And as a result of that, the Greens are now the single largest party on the council. They don't yet have a majority, but they have one seat more, the, uh, more than um, the Tories. And they are in a position now where they could go on to run that council either as a minority administration or in coalition with other groups. There's 12 Labour and 11 Lib Dem councillors there. So both Mid Suffolk, East Suffolk, huge successes for the Greens. Really interestingly, uh, there are wards in both of those council areas that cross over with the Waveney Valley constituency. That's one of the Green Party's top target general election seats with Adrian Ramsey, the Green Party's co-leader, being the parliamentary candidate there. East Hertfordshire, I mentioned this earlier, absolutely huge success there. The Greens went from two seats, just two seats, to 19 seats on the council overnight, again, becoming the single largest party. That's really, really significant. I'm going to be talking to Martin Butcher very, very shortly about what that means, whether the Greens are going to be in administration there. But it also, um, really interestingly, that council in 2015 only elected Tory councillors. There were no councillors from any other party. In 2019, the Greens gained two seats and now they have 19, which is absolutely huge and 17 gains made for the Greens there. Astonishingly successful results in East Hertfordshire. Other places where they've been really successful uh, election campaigns from the Greens, uh, Wealdon, the Greens gained nine seats in Wealdon. I'll be honest, I don't really know where Wealdon is, but the Greens have now got nine, uh, <laughs> gained nine seats there. I believe they're now on 11. In Lewis, the Greens have um, become the, the single largest party. Um, I can't find the exact number of seats they've gained. Um, on my sheet of paper, they gained eight seats and they're now the largest party in Lewis. The Tories completely gone from Lewis Council. They lost 19 seats on that council and the Greens uh, gained eight and are now the largest party there. Really in a good place to be leading that council as well. In Worcester, the Greens gained four seats. South Tyneside, three. Uh, in Seven Oaks, three. Leicester, they broke onto the council for the first time and gained three seats. In Norwich, the Greens gained two seats. One of them, uh, they won the final seat in Sewell Ward where they'd previously held two of the seats. And they also... Uh, got um, a seat in Wensum, which is really significant because Wensum was a ward that the Greens held uh, during the early 2010s, lost when Jeremy Corbyn became Labour leader, and they've won it back now by just 22 votes. Folkestone, the Greens have gained five seats. Forest of Dean, another place where the Green Party is now the single largest party with eight uh, gains to boot. I believe they're now on 15 seats in the Forest of Dean. Vale of Whitehorse is still being count counted. Uh, that's in Oxfordshire, near where I am. Uh, the Greens gained two seats uh, in the Vale of Whitehorse. Bradford, the Greens have gained two seats. Exeter, the Greens have gained two seats. Darlington, the Greens have gained five seats. Malvern Hills, four seats. Stafford, four seats. Stratford upon Avon, two seats. South Casterman, the Greens gained four seats, breaking onto that council for the very first time. The Wirral, the Greens have gained th three seats, including defending a seat um, that uh, was held by Joe Bird, who was a Labour councillor, defected to the Greens. She's now been re-elected as a Green. And in Warwick, uh, just before I came on air, the Greens became the largest party in Warwick too. So what we've seen is the national uh, picture of the Tories being absolutely hammered in these elections. 
due to their failure on the cost of living crisis, due to, you know, the cronies and corruption, all of the things that we've seen from the Tories. We've seen Labour and the Liberal Democrats making gains, but crucially, we've seen the Greens been making massive, massive gains as well. Now, I have to bring some bad news at this point because uh, it's not all rosy. There have been some losses for the Greens. So unfortunately, the, the Green Party in York lost all four of its seats on the council. I think there's some really um, significant local factors there that have driven that. Uh, there's some issues around parking restrictions in York City Centre, which uh, the Greens who've been in administration with the Liberal Democrats have taken the hit for. And also, sadly, in Brighton and Hove, um, the Green Party will no longer be in administration there. Um, when I Before I came on air, the Greens had already lost four seats on that council. It looks likely that there will be more losses to come. I'll be bringing you those results throughout the night. And I'll also be speaking to Zach Polanski, the deputy leader of the Green Party, about what he, what he makes of what's happened in Brighton and Hove. That's an overview of the lay of the land. I can see some comments coming in the chat. That's absolutely brilliant. Get your comments and questions coming in. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, share the video so more people can see it. Um, I'll just rattle through some of these comments. Thanks, Mike, for letting me know that my sound and picture are great. Uh, Helen Westhead, who's the Wales Green Party Deputy Leader. Um, thanks, Bright Green, for covering this. Thank you so much, Helen, for joining us. Adriana Spelinki, a regular viewer of Bright Green, uh, says celebrate the good times. Uh, Helen, again, has corrected me, uh, has told me, informed me that Wielden is in East Sussex. That's not a part of the world I know particularly well. Adriana has also told me that it's in Sussex. Uh, and Philip Davis has said, thank you for coverage, Chris. And it's been a good day for the Young Greens. There's lots of new Young Green councillors have been elected. That's true. And um, I'll hopefully get to speak about some of those very, very shortly. Um, please do keep me updated if there's any uh, seats that you spot that are coming in whilst I'm on air. I will do my best to, to keep on top of what's going on, but obviously it may be a little tricky. So in a few minutes time, I'm going to be joined by Martin Butcher. Uh, he's the first guest on tonight's show. He is a newly elected councillor in East Hertfordshire. And he, East Hertfordshire, of course, is one of the areas the Greens have won big this year gained 17 seats on the council, now the largest party, uh, the Tories ousted from power. This is true blue Tory heartlands, Hertfordshire, and the Greens are winning. Um, Jane Bassner has just come into the chat to say that there's been 15, 15 new young Green councillors elected this year. That's absolutely amazing to see more young Green councillors elected. As a former young Green councillor who has now graduated out of that age bracket, uh, I commend the uh, newly elected young Green councillors that will be joining um across the country um one thing i haven't mentioned yet really really quickly before i bring martin in soon is that not only have we seen those massive gains of you know five seven nine twelve seventeen seats on some councils we've also seen the greens breaking through onto councils for the very very first time you don't get those massive gains until you get that first green in the room and there have been loads of councils where greens have won their first ever seat including haven't uh, South Kestevan, I can't read my writing and probably can't pronounce these places that I don't know where they are. Ribble Valley, Bracknell Forest, North East Derbyshire, uh, the New Forest, Earwash and South End on Sea, all electing Green councillors for the first time. For the first time ever, those places will have Green representation. It means that they'll have people in their uh, council chambers making the case for Green politics. Um, Incredibly exciting. 45 people watching. That is amazing. Please do hit like, share and subscribe. I can see that Martin has joined the waiting room. So I'm going to be bring him in straight away without further ado so that you can hear from one of the newly elected councillors that has uh, just very recently um, got their seat. And I'm absolutely delighted that Martin can join us now. I'm sure he is extremely sleep deprived uh, <laughs> because... Uh, the East Hertfordshire count has been going on for a long old time. Uh, I think you started about 10 o'clock last night and finished about three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so I won't keep you too long. But uh, let's firstly, just how are you feeling, Martin? Uh, I mean, it's just an amazing feeling. It's it's just amazing. I mean, yes, we're all exhausted, but I mean, the, the, the adrenaline rush from this is keeping us going. It's um you know going into this we thought um uh, that we could be the largest opposition party to a tory administration and we just we did not predict the collapse of the tory vote in the way that it has and across the 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 part of the district where we picked up our seats around where hartford buntingford 
we were out polling the Tories in seats they had always held by a margin of two to one and three to one. It, it's it's been incredible. Um, so so what's so talk talk us through what's gone on there then. So East Hertfordshire, I'm right in thinking eight years ago, there wasn't a single non-Tory councillor on the council. In 2019, the Greens gained two seats. Now you're the largest party. T- talk us through that journey. Yeah, I mean it's it, it it's an amazing journey. In in 2019, we, we gained two seats. Both of those were Um, paper candidates who didn't expect to get elected. Um, We were benefiting from discontent generally with the Conservative Party nationally, from East Hearts Council itself, where the Conservatives have been in control um, for most of its 50 years. Um, In particular, there are issues around my hometown where where the... um, the district master plan allows for a 20% increase in the size of the town built on what was Greenbelt until the Tories moved the Greenbelt. In Hartford, it's um, a big quarry um, and uh, that, that was defeated and now housing uh, again. Um, there, there, there have been all kinds of um, smaller local issues and I think the other thing is that the Conservatives locally have just been hollowed out. You know, they've taken for granted that this was an area they would always control. Um, and they didn't put the work in, they didn't put the effort in. Um, the, the council was run by its executive, which um, didn't allow councillors from around the district to have a say from their from their towns up to the top um and and people have just reacted to that it's um we should we have i should say had amazing support from the party nationally you know we we've had um uh, you know adrian van ramsey visited us a couple of weeks ago natalie bennett has, has been visited a couple of times um we've had all kinds of support um to build up um a uh, a leafleting and door knocking campaign which you know four years ago we were incapable of doing we didn't have the members we didn't have the money and now our party structure is really robust um and people have i think also reacted to the fact that we are seen to work hard on the council and to be extremely responsive to very local um very local uh, concerns so that that's really where this has all come from and so you're now the largest party on the council i know it's very much early days you haven't slept yet um <laughs> but does that mean that you will now be as the green party running east hertfordshire council um we have to look at this um the you know the lib dems are there with um 10 seats it may be that we can um formal administration with them um but we have to exp- explore all kinds of options the last time this council slipped into no overall control for a very short period um there was a sort of local council version of a confidence and supply arrangement where every month the leaders of the part the leaders of the three parties as it was them not the greens got together and decided what the council could do in the coming month. Um, That's quite an unstable way of running things. I'm not sure we'd like that. Um, I think, you know, we we want to be in it for the four year long term and and, and building a good record of of work on the council. So uh, we, we have a party meeting on Monday where we thought we were going to discuss how we can be an effective opposition. Um, now we uh, have to discuss how best how best to run the council. Incidentally, we also have to discuss how we're going to do that while running both Hartford and Ware town councils because we've taken absolute control of both of those. And so, you may or may not be running the council 
as of next week. Um, but what are the Green Party's priorities for the uh, council going forward? Um, absolutely. The, f the first one is the big developments that the Tories have inserted into the district master plan are reviewed. Um, our district master plan itself is up for review next year, I believe. Um, and we want to see development which is sustainable, um, both in terms of house, housing quality, but also in terms of water usage um, that's well integrated into the towns that exist in the district rather than being um, car determined, car user sprawl out from the towns. Um, the, those are major, major points. We have. Um, uh, issues with very poor air quality locally so we need to look at um, what we can do to to you know, maybe some simple wins working with the county council to bring in 20 mile an hour speed limits in the towns to, re to reduce emissions um, there are issues around um, uh, com community arts and um, drama centers in a couple of the towns in the district um, and then the thing um, which um, blights all local government with the Conservatives cutting back central grants, we're, we're, looking, we're going to have to look at what we can do with a very, very, very tight budget. And so finally, before I let you run off and maybe get a nap uh, or, or go to whatever post-election party is happening, yeah. um, so the East, East Hertfordshire, it's a, it's a patch that... Um, Many of our viewers won't be overly familiar with, but uh, I mean, it's it's not dissimilar from some other areas where the Greens have started to perform really, really well, um, which is essentially sort of semi-rural areas that uh, are sort of commutable distances to a major urban area, in this case, sort of London. Um, and so there are other places where similar results have come in, you know, Mid-Suffolk being the big one, which again has that kind of similar nature. What do you think the results in East Hertfordshire tell us about uh, the, the Green Party more broadly and its appeal to voters and the kind of national picture? I think, first of all, it shows that, yes, we, we can defeat the, t the Conservatives in semi-rural areas, as you say, but we have also fought off um, in parts of the district challenges from Lib Dems and Labour. Um, so we're, we're competing across the political spectrum when we work on very local issues and are seen to be responsive to um, you know, the needs of residents. So that, I, think, I think that's, that's the message um, that, that I see. It's, it's listen to what your residents want, um, give it to them in a way which accords with the principles and policies of the Green Party and people react well to that. Thank you so much for joining me this evening, Martin. I'll let you get on and enjoy the rest of your day and bask in your success and glory. Um, Thanks yeah. so much. I'm, I'm gonna have a beer and listen to the rest of the show, so. <laughs> Enjoy. Amazing. Well, yeah, thanks so much, Martin. Drop off now whenever you want. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. And congratulations, of course. Uh, that was Martin Butcher, one of the newly elected councillors in East Hertfordshire. One of the major success stories of this year's local elections for the Green Party, where the Greens have gone from two to 19 seats on the council um, overnight. It's also a... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a massive, massive success for the Greens. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. I have got some amazing guests still lined up for the rest of the show still to come shortly. Please do let me know what you think about the results so far, about that conversation with Martin, about um, anything under the sun, how you're feeling today on this day where the Tories have taken a massive kicking um, and the uh, Greens have seen major, major gains. Um, please let me know in the chat and uh, thank you to everyone who shared the show stream and hit subscribe and hit like. Please do do that if you haven't already. Like, share, subscribe, all of that YouTube's jazz. Um, I'll just go to some of the comments in the chat. Um, so Helen Westhead, uh, Wales Green Party Deputy Leader, says congratulations, Martin. Such a huge kudos to everyone involved in the East Hertfordshire campaign.
Um, thank you so much, Helen, for tuning in. Uh, Chris Hart says, uh, it was a very good and very bad day in Lancaster and Morecambe. I haven't actually seen the results in Lancaster and Morecambe, so uh, this is fresh and new to me. Um, Chris says that uh, the Greens gained around 12 seats on 2019, so went from 10 to 22. Um, but the and we all and the Greens almost wiped out Labour inside Lancaster, but that Labour wiped out the independents in Morecambe. Um, I'm assuming the arithmetic there means that Labour are now still the largest party. Um, someone can clarify that who's got an eye on the results. Um, and Steve C says lots of effective anti campaigning in Brighton by Labour on poor recycling rates, bins, increasing bike car costs, etc. Okay, we're into the midst of discussing Brighton Hive. Brian Hove, uh, yes, is something we're going to discuss in more depth. Um, for those of you who are just joining, the Greens have lost um, seats in Brighton Hove. They're no longer going to be in administration. By the time I joined the stream, uh, they were on four losses. It may well have gone higher since then. Um, I will do my best to find out for you um, and let you know as and when I can. Um, so for those of you who are joining reasonably recently, just to give you a rundown of what has happened in the local elections in England um, so far this year, it's been a massive Tory wipeout. The latest count, they have lost almost 900 seats. Uh, Labour have gained 450 uh, plus the Liberal Democrats more than 300. And by the latest count I'm looking at, the Greens have gained 196 seats in this year's elections. I cannot un over or understate, I'm too tired to know which one, the significance of the scale of those gains. That is on track to be record-breaking gains for the Green Party. In 2019, the Greens gained 198 seats in the local elections. That was the best result they'd ever had. Now the Greens are looking at 196 gains and there are still many votes still to be counted in wards across the country. So we could see that number go much, much higher. A huge, huge success for the Greens so far. Now, before we bring in our other guests, I am just gonna delve into a little bit more detail on some of the other results that have come in over the course of the last 20 hours. And I should say that um, unfortunately, Ellie Chowns is no longer gonna be able to join us this evening, but I will still be joined by Zach Polanski, so stay tuned for him. And I'll try and speak to Ellie at some other point in the future. But before uh, Zach joins us later on, just to give you a bit more granularity on some of the results and some of the interesting things that have happened over the last 20 or so hours. Um, so we have seen, I think it's getting close now to half a dozen councils where the Green Party is now the largest party on uh, councils where they've gained sufficient seats to become the largest party in them. The big headline one, of course, is Mid Suffolk, the history making Mid Suffolk, where the Greens have uh, gained an overall majority. The first time that has ever happened anywhere in the country. Um, absolutely historic, hugely significant. But also in East Hertfordshire, as I was just discussing with Martin, the Greens are now the largest party there. That's a council that didn't elect a single non Tory councillor just eight years ago, now has 19 Greens. Um, and they're the, the largest party. East Suffolk, uh, just down the road, I assume, from Mid Suffolk, uh, the Greens have gained 11 seats, becoming the largest party with 16, pipping Tories to the, the post of becoming the largest party. The Greens have 16, the Tories have 15. Also in Lewis, the Greens are now the largest party. That's really, really significant. The Greens gained eight seats in Lewis um, in this year's elections. In doing so, they helped wipe the Tories completely off the council. There are no more Tories on Lewis Council. This was previously a Tory stronghold. Now the Greens are the largest party there with, with, um, with 17 seats. The Lib Dems, I think, have either 16 or 15. I can't remember which. And I didn't jot it down. The Forest of Dean, the, the, the Green Party, is again the largest party there. Eight gains, 15 Green seats on the council. And Warwick. Uh, the Greens are now the largest party on Warwick Council. That's hugely significant. There aren't many places at the moment where the Greens, or rather there weren't before yesterday, where the Greens are the largest party on the council. This is really, really, really good news for the Green Party. There's also some other bits and pieces of good news that I think is really interesting to look at. So one of the interesting phenomena that has taken place since Keir Starmer became leader of the Labour Party is that there has been more than a dozen Labour councillors who defected to the Green Party. And 
there were eight of those councillors who were up for re-election this year under a Green Party ticket, having first been elected with a red rosette on. Now, if I I think I've done the numbers rightly, and I believe there are four Green councillors who've been successfully re-elected on a Green Party ticket, despite the fact they were first elected as Labour. So we had in Peterborough, Heather Skibstead was first elected as Labour councillor, now been re-elected as a Green. In the Wirral, Joe Bird, um, first elected as a Labour councillor, now re-elected as a Green. In Leicester, Patrick Kitterick, I think the name is, um, re-elected as a Green, having first been elected as a Labour councillor. And also in Rosendale, a defecting Labour councillor has been re-elected as well. The reason that I think this is really, 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 really significant is because, firstly, it's really challenging to get other councillors to defect to you. Uh, it's really hard to make people make that jump. But it's even harder to get re-elected, get them re-elected um, as well. You know, often they'll have defected and they'll be in wards where there's not that much history of Green Party activity. They don't have the infrastructure and the capacity that their previous parties did. You know, if they're defected for the Labour parties, the Greens, generally speaking, they're not going to have as much infrastructure, resource and capacity. And the fact that the Greens have managed to get four of those eight re-elected is really, really significant. The other factor in these is that obviously the Labour Party want nothing less than for their councillors to defect to another party and then to get re-elected because it smashes the incentive they have to stay in the Labour Party even if they don't agree with its leadership, its values, its direction and so on. And so the fact that those councillors got re-elected as Greens I think could be really significant in terms of potentially seeing other defections. And it's not just the Greens that have managed to pull this off. There have been a number of independent councillors who were first elected as Labour councillors who've left or been suspended or expelled since they were first elected. And tonight or yesterday or whenever the results came in, time is a blur now, uh, have been elected, re-elected as socialist independents. So Cal Corkery in Portsmouth, uh, he was expelled from the Labour Party on completely spurious grounds, has now been re-elected as an independent councillor uh, in Charles Dickens Ward in Portsmouth, and also Alan Gibbons in Liverpool has done the same. This is all really interesting, I think, in terms of how left-wing Labour councillors act and behave within the Labour Party, do more of them, decide to de facto other parties, knowing that they can, uh, they have the ability to get re-elected under that banner, because the biggest incentive they have to stay in Labour is that it's very, very challenging to win seats under other banners. Um, or do they use that as leverage to extract more concessions within their Labour groups? I don't know, but it is significant nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching thus far. There's 49 people watching. Thank you all so much. It's amazing to have you all here. Please do, if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit like. Let me know where you're calling from in the chat. Get questions in the chat and any comments or thoughts on the election so far. I would love to hear them. There's a question earlier I saw from Danny Shivers. Uh, who asked me a question about Bracknell Forest. Um, so Bracknell Forest is on my list somewhere. Let me just dig it out. Um, Bracknell Forest, Bracknell Forest, Bracknell Forest. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Uh, I can't see it on my list anywhere. Maybe it's on my other list. Yes, it is. So Bracknell Forest, the Greens uh, broke onto that council for the first time in these elections. Um, Danny Shivers has uh, asked uh, if I have any thoughts about the Bracknell Forest elections. It seems like a successful example of a progressive alliance type approach. I don't know the detail on Bracknell Forest, I'm afraid, um, but I'm sure some people will watching will, and I'm sure we can get them uh, talking in the chat. Um, if you do have thoughts on what's going on in Bracknell Forest, please do pop them in the chat. But on the question of progressive alliances, um, I think there's some interesting results uh, that will be coming in uh, still and have come in already where there have been electoral arrangements between the Greens and other political parties. Um, so Herefordshire is one of those places. Now in Herefordshire, the Greens have been in administration with a range of independents over the last few years. Um, and actually in advance of these elections, I spoke to some of the people involved in the Herefordshire campaign and there was really big ambitions that the Greens could gain significant numbers of seats. So prior to the election, the Greens had seven seats. There was talk about them doubling to 14, possibly getting even to 16. And in Herefordshire, there's been a uh, electoral arrangement with some independents where the Greens stand in some wars and independents and others. 
And um, the results in Herefordshire don't necessarily lend themselves to the idea that those uh, that strategy has been particularly effective. I'm sure there are plenty of other factors at play, but in Herefordshire, what's happened is actually the independents have been absolutely hammered, have lost lots and lots of the seats. And Herefordshire is one of the few places where the Tories have actually gained seats. I believe the Tories uh, ended up on 21 seats with, I think, about seven gains in Herefordshire. The independents losing lots and lots of seats. The Greens managed to gain two, but nothing like the sort of seven or nine gains they were talking about making in advance so um that's the interesting thing when it comes to progressive alliances there are other places where it seems like informal or formal arrangements between other parties were in place um i know for example in oxfordshire and some of the oxfordshire district council elections there were um arrangements with other parties including the liberal democrats to try and unseat the conservatives um i i Sadly, the Oxfordshire results are still coming in as we speak, and I haven't had the chance to look at them in depth, and I'd really love to because I live in Oxfordshire. I would love to see how the Greens are doing, so if anyone knows, please do put them in the chat. I know before I came on air that um, on Vale of Whitehorse Council in Oxfordshire, the Greens gained two seats uh, in Shrivenham and another village that I'm not sure the name of, um, where Cat Foxhall and Viral Patel, Viral Patel uh, got elected, two brilliant candidates um, there. Uh, there may well be other um, council groups. Uh, there may, be, may well be other gains that have come through in Oxfordshire that I'm not yet aware of. Oh, I believe uh, one of the seats in Whitney uh, was gained by the Greens as well, which I think is in West Oxfordshire. I would love to hear about uh, Oxfordshire uh, if you know about that. Danny Shivers in the chat said that Bracknell Forest was 38 out of 42 Tory in 2019. This time, all the opposition parties stood aside for each other in most seats. The Tories lost 27 seats and Labour are now in control. That's fascinating, Danny. And perhaps that is a vindication of that as an approach um, in that kind of patch. Um, love to get people's thoughts on that. I know if there's one thing that provokes more, uh, more if there's one thing that provokes controversy within the Green Party, except maybe HS2, it's the concept of progressive alliances. Um Ruthie Brandt has said in the chat that uh, the Greens have gained other seats in the Vale of Whitehorse. Uh, so far, there have been no Tory wins in the Vale of Whitehorse. That's absolutely phenomenal. Philip Davis has just told me there are 199 Green gains in these elections so far. Yes, that is not quite 200, which sounds like a round sexy number, but 199 gains is the sexiest number of them all because in the last elections uh, that were held in many of these seats, the Greens gained 198 seats, the record-breaking election results. And that means with 199 gains, the Greens have now broken records again. There has never been a better result for the Green Party in local elections than the one that we are watching live right now. Absolutely huge, historic and phenomenal. The nationwide picture, it seems as historic as some of the local things that we've seen, like the majority council in Mid Suffolk and the massive gains in places like East Hertfordshire and so on. Absolutely historic, a huge night for the Greens. I'll just take a little peek and see if I can get a sense of what's happening. Um, so I'm seeing 199 gains for the Greens as well. Maybe someone will give me that magic 200 when it comes in. Um, but plenty of seats still to come. Um, I would love to hear if anyone's got any news from Brighton and Hove. Uh, we talked earlier about Brighton and Hove where the Greens have been losing some seats. Um, I'm just looking now and I've seen some wards have been declared, um, but I'm not sure that these were previously Green wards. I don't think they were. Uh, so if you're interested in Brighton and Hove, um, the Labour Party have won in Westbourne and Poets Corner. That wasn't a green held ward, I believe, but it was an area the Greens were campaigning in. Um, in West Dean and Hove Park, again, not a green area. The Tories have won all three seats there. In Central Hove, this definitely was an area the Greens were campaigning in. Unfortunately, the Labour Party has won both the seats there. And in Whitehawk and Marina, Labour have won the two seats there. There are some really tight races I think still to come I saw earlier that some of the people in the Labour Party were talking confidently about winning uh gaining the uh seat of Brunswick and Adelaide from the Greens that's the seat that is currently held by the Green Group leader on the City Council Phelan McCafferty and Hannah Clare it would be really really sad news for the Brighton Hove Green Party if they were to lose their seats I've been talking for a long time just gonna have a quick sip of coffee apologies this is a very raw uh live stream but I do need the coffee both in my throat and for my general wakeness. 
it was wakedness, not nakedness, uh, just for clarity. Danny Shivers is going back and forth themselves about their uh, progressive alliance in Bracknell, said the Greens only um, gained, ended up with two seats from the arrangement in Bracknell, which led to the Tories being ousted. So plenty still to debate on that tactic. I'm sure there is plenty still to debate and the Greens will have that debate ad nauseum, I am sure. Um, 47 people watching. Thank you so much for joining. Please do hit subscribe. Please do hit like. Please do hit share. Um, I said we would get to 50. We've surpassed 50 at various points. Thank you all so much. It's an absolute privilege and an honour to be uh, with you. I don't know, uh, you know, you've chosen to spend your Friday evening uh, not in the glorious sunshine, not enjoying yourself in a pub, but listening to my uh, Midlands tones droning on about elections. Uh, you must be as strange as I am. Philip Davis has just said there's been 210 gains for the green party um wow another 11 gains that's absolutely huge if that's true um yep john draper also saying 210 gains uh, i would love to know where those most recent gains have come from because that's absolutely huge that's uh yeah that's more than the record-breaking results of 2019 by quite some margin um interestingly the, the greens publicly in advance of these elections were saying they were on track for 100 gains now some of the commentariat cast some scorn about that and said the greens don't understand expectation management in politics you're supposed to say that you do much worse than you actually do because somehow that makes sense um privately greens were talking the leadership and others were talking about 250 gains and if we're looking at 210 right now then you know possibly we're getting um uh <laughs> possibly we're getting close to it um Wow, 210 gains. That's that's quite something. I would love to hear where some of those most recent gains are, if you know uh, where they have come in from. Um, just checking, seeing if anything new is coming in. Just in case you're sticking around waiting for Zach Polanski, he's going to be with us at seven, just so you know. Um, so feel free to get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself comfortable for Zach. I'll be talking to about all these results and much, much more. Um I've seen that in Queen's Park Ward in Brighton Hove, Labour have won both the seats. Again, I don't think that was a green-held ward. I think it was one that the Greens were active in, though. Um, there are a few key seats still to come. Brunswick and Adelaide, Regency, I think, is still to come, which were previously green-held uh, wards. Um, I'll bring you Brighton results as they come in, because I'm sure many of you will be interested in Brighton Hove. Um I'll talk about some of the other results that have come in uh, in a little bit more detail um, because some of them are really, really interesting. Um, so Norwich, uh, I had the privilege of uh, living in Norwich for five years, which I believe is the third best city in the world. Um, so actually, sorry, that's a lie. It's the second best city in the world. Um, and Norwich is really interesting. So historically, Norwich has been one of those places where the Greens have done really, really well at the peak the, at their peak, the Green Party held 15 seats on the City Council and seven seats on the County Council. They went through a period of losing quite a substantial number of those seats during the uh, years when Jeremy Corbyn was leading the Labour Party. It's one of those places like Oxford, where I am, where the you know the the left wing values and the and the kind of social liberalism that was exemplified by Corbyn uh, went down particularly well with you know areas with a high number of uh, young people, students, renters um the high lgbt uh population and so on and so on and so on places where the greens tend to do well and also places where labor and the corbyn tended to do well the greens i think went down to five seats uh maybe even fewer than that at their lowest point i think maybe even three seats at the lowest point um they started to build that back up in 2019 when they went back up to nine and they've steadily been building up the number of seats they've held on the council ever since um they started making gains in a new ward, Sewell Ward, a few years ago. They uh, This election, they gained the final of the three seats in that ward. I mean, they now have the full suite. Taking them, that took them up to 12 seats in the council. But crucially, they also yesterday won the seat of Wensum from Labour. Wensum is a one of those wards that the Greens held um, in the 2010s, but lost during the Corbyn years. They won it by just 22 votes, 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 votes. Um, the fact that they've won that back shows, I think, that the Green Party are again on an upward trajectory in Norwich. Norwich only has 39 seats in the council, so it only takes 20 to get a majority. And the Greens are getting to the point where they could start edging towards that in the future. Um, Nate Higgins says the big jump in the council results being declared was uh, the Lewis results being um, announced uh, on the BBC. 
Uh, for those of you who aren't aware of what's happened in Lewis, the, the headline, the beautiful, joyous, amazing headline is that there are no more Tories left on Lewis Council. What a treat. Uh, the Tories went from 19 seats to a big fat zero in this year's elections, losing every single seat on the council. And the Greens were one of the big beneficiaries. The Greens gained eight seats on the council, going from, I think, nine to 17 seats. They are now the largest party on the council in Lewis, one of those areas where the Greens did astronomically well. Uh, the Greens have been in administration in Lewis for a few years, jointly with the Liberal Democrats. Um, they've done really innovative things on housing. I'd recommend you go and check that out. Um, so Lewis is one of those really interesting places as well. Um, apologies, I do need my coffee. Uh, other interesting areas in these elections, the Wirral. Uh, the Greens have gone from nine to 12 seats on the Wirral, winning all three seats in a new ward. One of those people who was elected was Joe Bird, who was formerly a Labour councillor, uh, now defected to the Green Party and was re-elected on the Green Party ticket, which is hugely significant. Um, and uh, if you uh, are interested, there's an interview with Joe Bird on our YouTube channel. So after this stream, go on our YouTube channel and you can see that interview where she talks through her journey from Labour to the Greens and why she's opted to stay with the Greens. I just had a correction in the chat from Chris Hart. Uh, Chris said that the Greens have gained, uh, not gained, have won and ended up on 20 seats in Lancaster today. Uh, interestingly, um, I did a piece on the Greens in Lancaster recently for the Bright Green for Bright Green's website. Um, spoke to a lot of people involved in Lancaster, and um, they were talking about twenty being the number that they wanted to gain as a minimum. So, if they've gained twenty, that's good news for them. Uh, Kieran Dams has said Liverpool was interesting for the Greens, and the Greens missed out by one vote in a ward. I didn't clock that one. A one vote loss is absolutely devastating. Um, Whoever um, whoever didn't vote, um, don't feel ashamed, uh, but know that your vote really could have counted uh, if you had voted differently in whatever ward in Liverpool that was. Uh, a few more interesting places. Uh, Folkestone, I think that's in Kent. Uh, five green gains there. Uh, not sure about the details behind that one. Uh, Worcester, four green gains in Worcester. I think uh, mostly from the Tories, including unseating the Conservative Party leader on Worcester Count City Council. Uh, always lovely to unseat one of their leaders, and the Greens managed to do that in Worcester. There's been a flurry of other places where the Greens have unseated a Tory group leader as well. I think in Stafford, um, the Greens managed to unseat uh, the Tory leader there. Greens and Stafford gained four seats, which is really, really substantial, uh, including to Friends of Bright Green, uh, Doug Roxall, and I think, I think, although I haven't actually double-checked this, I think Emma Carter got elected as well, um, but you can check that and verify that for me in case I've made a glaring error. Um, please do let me know if I have. Um, so Stafford is very, very interesting. Uh, South Kestavan, which I'm not sure I'm pronouncing right, and I couldn't point to on, on a map. I think it... I think it might be in Lincolnshire. Uh, that's a council where the Greens have broken through for the first time in this year's elections. Um, went from zero seats to four seats in one election cycle. That's really impressive. Uh, really interesting result there. Darlington, another interesting patch because the Greens gained five seats in Darlington. And now Darlington is one of those places that's a big Labour Tory marginal, not just in the council elections, but also, I think, in parliamentary seats. Labour didn't manage to take overall control of the council precisely because of the fact that the Greens gained seats. And so the fact that the Greens are gained seats instead of Labour means that the council is still in overall control. It means the Greens can have influence over the decisions, uh, much more influence over decisions that are being made there than they would otherwise. Uh, so that's a significant result in Darlington. 46 people watching. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please hit like, please hit share, please hit subscribe. Uh, the person you've all been waiting for will be joining us very, very soon. Zach Polanski will be on the stream to divulge, divulge, uh, dive into more of these election results with me. Um, plenty to discuss with him. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking about lots of it um as it comes in i'm just gonna have another look at brighton i know i seem obsessed with brighton but it is a significant one if um the greens do lose lose lots of seats in brighton hove um and i don't really know what's happened there because the greens appear to be losing seats their vote share appears to be dropping but 
And, and I, I should say that the Labour Party in advance of these elections were extremely bullish about making gains in Brighton Hove. They were talking about potentially gaining an overall majority, something which hasn't happened for, I think, about 20 years in Brighton Hove. Um, and uh, yeah, and it looks like that they were right to feel bullish, that they have been making gains. And um, I did some campaigning in Brighton Hove and I didn't get the sense that things were going badly for the Greens. Um, I know there was a lot of jitteriness amongst uh, Greens there, but I was, I'm was i surprised to see losses coming in so far. Um, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens with the rest of the results. A um, couple of key wards, Regency and Brunswick and Adelaide still to come in, I think. Um, although Kieran Dams is saying that the current results are Labour 34, up 14, Tories on six, minus seven. This seems pretty substantial. The, the, the Labour Party has gained a majority on Brighton Hove Council at the moment. Um, that seems really, really substantial. Um, I'll, I'll check out and verify that in a second. Nate has confirmed that um, Emma Carter did win in Stafford. Brilliant. Well done to Emma. Well done to Doug. Well done to everyone in Stafford for your successes. Um Joe Lever said that the there was the first ever green green on Southampton Council today. I missed that one. Uh, thank you, Joe, for telling me that. First ever green elected to Southampton Council today. I don't know much about the elections there. Apologies. Uh, Sam Coates says, amazing stamina. I'm flagging, I can tell you that. Um, Sam asks, why do you think the growth is so much slower in cities and towns, that cities than in towns and rural areas? Um, so before I get to that, I'm seeing a flurry of people in the chat saying, um the the bbc are reporting there's a labor majority in brighton hove and that Phelan mccafferty the green party leader has lost his seat there um that's really really sad news for the greens really significant result there um i'll try and keep on top of that but uh, apparently the bbc is reporting that so uh, thanks steve c for flagging that and kieran dams as well um substantial losses for the greens in brighton hove uh, back to Sam's question. Why do we think the growth is so much slower in cities than, than in towns and rural areas? Well, um, there's a couple of things there. So there's a technical reason, uh, which I'm sure, Sam, you're aware of. But uh, in a lot of the uh, councils that are up for election this year, the rural areas and the, the areas that are sort of semi-rural, where there are you know, medium, small, medium sized, sized towns, they tend to have elections which are all outs. So every single councillor is up for election. And that's where you're getting these massive swings where you're getting Greens gaining sort of 17, uh, 11, 12, whatever else, <laughs> double digit numbers, which we don't normally hear, um, sized gains for the Greens. Um, that's only possible in areas really where every single councillor is up for election. Uh, in other places, it's uh, elections are being done in thirds or halves. So only a third of the council are up for election or half the council are up for election. So Norwich, for example, um, elects in thirds. So they had 13 seats that were up for election this time. Uh, the Greens actually uh, gained two uh, of those 13 and held on to three. So five of the 13 seats in Norwich were held by Greens. So that's something like what, like... 40% of the seats were Greens. Maybe my maths isn't great. 35% uh, or something. So quite substantial. Uh, if you were to extrapolate that, if the whole of Norwich were to vote at once, you'd be looking at much more substantial gains. So that's the technical reason, I think. Um, in some of the rural, more rural areas, you tend to get all out elections, which can lead to these big, big swings. There are some places where that's not the case. So Brighton Hove also elects in all outs. And I mean, we've seen the, the scale of things there. Um, I haven't sort of delved into the data in, in, in any significant sense at the moment, but I guess what we're seeing a lot over um, a lot tonight is we're seeing that the Greens have mostly been gaining seats from the Tories. And actually, the Labour vote appears to be holding up in places where we've traditionally been challenging the um, where we've been tr traditionally challenging. So in a lot of those cities, metropolitan areas and so on. And so I guess my initial gut reaction would say that in patches where it's a green Labour battleground, um, it's tougher for us to, to make gains at the moment because Labour are buoyant in the po uh, polls um, and because, um, yeah, because, because the fact that, you know, the, the Labour are on 40% of the polls and therefore they are uh, generally performing quite well. I must say I'm a little bit surprised about that, though. Um, I was expecting us to start to see some uh, city seats fall to the Greens uh, because of the fact that, 
Labour has moved so far to the, the right under Keir Starmer. So the kind of inverse Corbyn effect. So in the Corbyn years, the Greens lost lots of seats to the Labour Party because the Greens were, the Labour Party was occupying the space the Greens traditionally had politically. Now the Labour Party has abandoned so much of that under, Jeremy, under Keir Starmer, whether it be on um, refugees, whether it be on LGBT rights, whether it be on economic transformation, all of those things, Labour Party is either triangulating at best or being reactionary at worst. Uh, I was expecting to see some places fall to the Greens as a result of that. Uh, in kind of uh, areas where you have, you know, the kind of high uh, high density of um, uh, BME voters, LGBT people, students, renters, young people, etc. We don't seem to have seen that on a massive scale yet. There are some places where that seems to have happened. So I know that in Cambridge, the Greens gained a really, really student heavy ward um, in other places um, as well. There have been gains. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like... It, I, I basically, this is a very long winded of saying, way of saying I don't know, but I think there's a number of um, factors at play there. Possibly, um, I think we we'll probably get a better picture of the state of play for Greens in cities in the next election cycles because you're going to have more elections in those kinds of um, city areas coming up. Uh, I think in 2020. Uh, four. So I know that in Oxford we've got elections then um, we don't have this year. I'm going to go to a couple of messages from the chat. So Nate Higgins has said that he doesn't think that Phelium seat has been announced yet. So Phelium is the Green Party leader on Brighton Hove City Council, um, whose seat um, Brunswick and Adelaide is apparently under threat to Labour. Uh, Nate says that uh, the local democracy reporter is gone, uh, uh, has said that it's gone to a recount. Uh, interesting development there. Uh, Liz Shepherd is talking about Liverpool. Um, Peter McCall said that Sam Gorst got elected in Liverpool uh, as a Green. Um, Joe Lever has made a really, really good point in the chat, uh, saying that all the gains are incredible, uh, but they really also enjoy seeing how many seats the Greens are retaining in this year's elections. That's really important, actually, um, because in this set of elections, the Greens are defending an unprecedented number of seats, over 200, more than ever before. You know, past elections, it's been a dozen or so, sometimes two, three dozen. Nothing like this uh, before. So the fact that the Greens have been able to defend all those seats and make substantial, significant gains is really, really, really significant. So I totally agree with you on that, Joe. Zach Polanski is going to be joining us in about three minutes time. Please stay tuned. If you haven't already, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe. Do all the things that make me happy. Um, and uh, yeah. Zach will be joining us very, very soon. Whilst I've got your attention, whilst you are my captive audience, uh, I do have something to ask of you, which is that Bright Green doesn't have the backing of billionaires and big business. You might have been able to tell from the kind of scrappiness of the stream. Uh, we rely solely on the kind and generous support and donations of people just like you. If you are able to, please do head to our website, bright-green.org forward slash donate. Set up a regular donation so that we can keep putting out videos like this and much, much more. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video, so please do have a look. If you're able to donate, please, please do. Um, I have just seen a flurry of results coming in from various places. So apparently, this is all breaking news to me. Uh, Greens have gained three seats in Canterbury. Um, that's in Kent. Uh, I think four gains coming in in Horsham. I think Horsham is one of those places in Sussex. Uh, I'm hearing that the Greens are um, gaining seats in South Oxfordshire uh, from the... Tories, um, two seats there. Uh, interestingly, so South Oxfordshire is one of those places the Greens are currently administration, uh, joint administration with the Liberal Democrats. They're making gains against the Tories in South Oxfordshire. Um, in a place whose name I cannot pronounce, Bayburg, uh, someone will cannot correct me, Baburg, Bayburg, Baburg. Uh, the Greens are now the largest party on Bayburg Council, uh, 10 green seats, a gain of four, um, massive, massive uh, results there. We'll delve into all that in a little bit more detail uh, very, very shortly with Zach Polanski, who will be joining us in a couple of moments time. Luke Brown has asked, what do we think those results mean for Westminster seats? I'll be putting that exact question to Zach Polanski when he joins us. So thank you for asking it. Uh, I'm just going to check everything is in order. Everything's working OK. Um, and that Zach is going to be able to join us. Apologies for the uh, techie stuff. I don't have a producer. 
that's where you should donate so I can get one. And this can all be much smoother and I'm not having to check Twitter and my WhatsApps whilst I'm on the live stream. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. So before I let Zach in, I just uh, wanted to ask you, it's an absolute privilege to have Zach with us. So please do hit the share button, share this stream on our YouTube channel so that the world can hear from Zach, who appears to be coming us live from LBC. Maybe he's got a new job as a uh, shock jock on uh, LBC. Only joking. Zach, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing this evening? I'm, I'm feeling pretty amazing as I think anyone involved with the Green Party uh, feels today, although quite seriously, it's a good, important point to say that although things have gone really well, I'm really aware that lots of people have worked really hard and either not got across the line or um, held onto their seat. So I just want to send love, kindness and um, solidarity to those people. Uh, but without a doubt, I think the very, very obvious story is how successful these elections have been. And I don't think the magnitude of this moment can be missed. It's really, really clear that... Um, there's been an outright rejection of a Conservative Party. I think there's, I'm sure we'll have this discussion now, lots of reasons why people have moved from the Labour Party to the Green Party as well. But I think it's probably not being reported in the media narrative more widely that you can spin it in different, lots of different ways, but the Green Party have done really well. And the Lib Dems and Labour are probably quite happy with themselves, but it's only the Conservative Party who I think will be really unhappy uh, at the end of these results. And I think that's a, you know, that's a tick for a progressive Britain. Talk us through then the most exciting results that have happened for the Greens overnight and over today. So I think the most obvious one that if you've, if you've not heard about this one, then where have you been? But Mid-Suffolk, uh, we have got an outright majority on Mid-Suffolk. This is particularly exciting because we have won the popular share of the vote. That is also a parliamentary, a part of a parliamentary constituency of Waveney Valley, where Adrian Ramsey, the Green Party co-leader, is standing. So how people vote locally and how they vote nationally is different and we shouldn't pretend that that is now an easy job and job done but i think it's a really clear argument that targeting seats at council level and then encouraging people to vote for greens nationally can be a winning argument i think we need to be careful with that argument we want councillors for councillors sake too they're not just stepping stones for members of parliament we know how important the need for a local councillor is on things like local services, libraries, potholes, the roads around, etc. All of those things are really important. But it's also undeniable to see that there is often a trend where when a party builds up a base of support and we target, that's where your next MP comes from. And not from yesterday, but just if people don't know, I repeat this about 20 times a day, so why not here now? Uh, Bristol West, there are 20 councillors, 17 of them are already green. So it's the same thing for Carla Denia in Bristol West, that it's very clear if you got everyone to vote, Nationally, how they did locally, Carla would be our next MP, and that's pretty exciting. Um, and sorry, I'm rambling from your question, but I think it's also worth saying there's lots of places that didn't necessarily get coverage beforehand in the same magnitude, but have just been brilliant results. I was going to say shock results, and not shock results, especially to the people who are there. They know how hard they were working, but the media didn't pick up on them. So I'm thinking of places like Forest of Dean, who are now the largest party on the councillor. East Hertfordshire is a very obvious one. 2015, that was 100% Conservative council. There wasn't a single other councillor. Then we got two Green councillors on that council. We now have 19, which is 17 gains um, and two halts. And I mean, that's just amazing. And then finally, I think what's often missed um, in politics, uh, particularly in the national media, are just those personal stories where you go help out on a campaign and you just think that is someone who I know would be an amazing councillor and I just can't wait um, to see them get across the line. So I'm thinking of Amanda in the Wirral, who I've seen get across the line today, um, Akua, both uh, were people who defected from the Labour Party along with Joe Bird. It's been brilliant to see them hold their seats. That sends a clear message that um, even people who defect from the Labour Party, where we work and show hard their strength and, and their community feeling, we hold those seats. And then finally, Seven Oaks. Um, I have a personal attachment to Seven Oaks because my partner's father was an independent councillor on Seven Oaks Council about 20, 30 years ago before he died. Um, I was there campaigning yesterday. We've never had a councillor on Seven Oaks Council. And we got three across the line, Laura, Shani, and uh, Mark, and I think those three are genuinely going to be brilliant councillors. So I'm excited both because it's a breakthrough on the new council, but also just that personal touch, really, that you spend a day or two or several days with people campaigning and you just think, I really want you to win. And it's just amazing when people do.
obviously you've talked about the success stories, but it's not all been a rosy picture uh, in these elections. So we are still getting results coming in, I think, now from Brighton Hove. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to see them yet, but uh, the Greens have lost seats there. They've lost control of the council. And we've also seen a few other places where there have been green losses, such as York, where every Green was um, who was up for election didn't win. What's going on in those places? Talk us through your assessment of what's happened in Brighton Hove and if you know the detail of York as well. Well, the first thing is to say how sad I am. Um, I won't linger on that because it doesn't make for a particularly exciting interview, but I think it is always important to say that when people work hard, and we know you can't become a Green Party councillor without working hard, especially under a first past post system. So um, I just want to acknowledge that, first of all. In York, you know, I'm always nervous about kind of blaming other parties' leaflets or propaganda because ultimately we can get better arguments and we need to find different ways of communicating our arguments. So I'm talking about us as a party, I'm not singling in any local party here, but I think we always need to look at, you know, we've had these amazing gains, but actually where we've had losses, what are the lessons from that? In York, I think it is worth saying that, you know, the Labour Party put out a leaflet everywhere that said they were going to freeze council tax using oil and gas windfall, which, you know, is something that it's not even, you know, sometimes I think political parties can get away with a bit of cheeky kind of mixing national and local, but that is so far away from what can be done uh, at the local level that that was pretty grim. And I think in Brighton and Hove, it's really worth saying that uh, Brighton and Hove Labour uh, controlled the administration and then it collapsed partly due to infighting, partly they just didn't know what to deal with some of the crises there, cost of living crisis that's heavily hit uh, uh, the tourist industry there and, and various other kind of issues in that area. And I'm really proud that the Green Party stepped up and took control of that administration. And I don't think it's not for me to say that I regret it, but I imagine people in Brighton hope and regret it either in that Green Party. I think we can be really proud of what was achieved there. I think it's also fair to say that when you do that, when you take take on an administration that you've not won outright, you take it with a whole set of problems and you take it from a a very aggressive Labour Party that frequently worked with the Conservative Party to team up on the Conserv on the Labour of a Green Party minority administration. That is going to be difficult. Now, someone watching this might go, "That's politics." You know, team, you know, other parties, opposition parties, often criticise the ruling or largest party, and that is politics. And they agree it is. But I think we've done, we've shown in other places how it can be so different. So in Lewis, for instance, where Greens work alongside the Labour Party and they work constructively with them. And now we've just seen a wipeout of Tories. I can go straight to the London Assembly where uh, with London Mayor Sadiq Khan, I have a really constructive relationship with him where I do criticise him. I expose where there's gaps in his plans, but also when he gets things right, I do applaud that. And I just think, you know, you never want to sound sore about, about losing, but I just think, you know, the Labour Party, party in Brighton and Hove probably do need to reflect on if you're winning something, is it worth winning in that way? What are the longer term effects of this? And actually, isn't the real problem here a Conservative government that for 13 years have implemented austerity on the country and particularly on councils? And so often when they could have been joining us in blaming the Conservative government and holding them to account, it was too easy to um, pl place blame at the, the Green Party. As I say, I say that carefully because I'm sure someone can whip out an example of where the Green Party blame another party too and that is politics but also i think you know an election day especially when we've done so well it is really important to still reflect on where we've not done so well and gone okay what can we learn here and how can we get better next time and so finally before i let you go because i'm sure you've got lots of other media gigs to do um my last question for you is really what do these results these record-breaking results and i should emphasize the green party has never had success in the scale uh the numbers that are in now are over 200 which beats the previous record of 2019 um what do these election results mean for the future of the green party well i think there's a few things so the thing i'm very excited about. I'm not sure if I can announce this, but I am doing anyway, is that hundreds of people have joined the Green Party today. Now, we want more. So I'd encourage everybody to please keep tweeting out, ask people to join the party, particularly if you're a member. If you're listening to this and you're not a member and you're just a supporter, maybe today is the exact time to join. Sometimes when I say that to people, they bring up, you know, a policy that they don't like or something about the party that, that, that they don't think is ideal for their perfect party. I think that's even more of a reason to join. We're a democratic party. We are one member, one vote. And ultimately, it's by having voices within the party pushing for progressive policies and the better vision of a future that we want to society is how we keep that agenda going. So I would encourage people to join the party and have a voice from within the party rather than from without. I think the next thing to do is look at where we've had those breakthrough councils. 
Uh, I want to give them a little break. They should have a little party and a celebrate. But I think the question immediately has to be, OK, how do we build on this success and how do we immediately start communicating with voters the difference a Green makes in the room? Even if it's just one councillor on the council, I think straight away of Caroline Russell, for instance, I know I'm being London centric, but I work with her every day in Islington, where she was one councillor for a long time, holding a massive Labour uh, council to, to account. She now has Ernest Stas and Bernardi doing brilliant work alongside her. And I think that's an example of where you get someone in, you get more people in. There's other places though where, well, East Hertfordshire, where you went from two to 19. So we know those kind of growth can happen too if we put our minds to it. So I think that's the other thing. And then I think the third thing is, you know, we need a general election. We need this Conservative government gone more than anything. And I think, uh, I was about to say from this moment, the party has to be election ready, but that's not true. We've had to be election ready for a little while now. But I think this is a real clear call for action that if we take this as seriously as we need to, if we rise to the scale of action that's needed, and if we keep putting on uh, powerful, compelling, persuasive arguments in the media, then the Green Party will continue uh, to get more of a spotlight that it deserves. Obviously, we're a long way from getting the amount of coverage we should have, but we're getting better and better. And I think once we get there, that's exactly how we get more Green MPs. So I think we're on the route. But what we really need is people to join. Uh, we need that big movement. So I'm back to the to the join ask, please. Zach, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Take care. So that was, of course, Zach Polanski, the Deputy Leader of the Green Party of England and Wales. Let me know what you thought about uh, his assessment of the elections. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit more of mine before we wrap up the stream shortly. Before I do that, I just have a couple of things to let you know about. Uh, the first of which is if you're new to Bright Green, and there's a lot of people watching, so there's going to be some who are new to us. Um, we On our YouTube channel, we don't just do election night live streams. We also run a monthly show on every second Sunday of the month called Bright Green Live, where I bring together um, people from across the left, uh, from across the UK's Green Party, social movements, the Labour movement and much, much more to talk to them about some of the biggest issues facing the country, some of the campaigns they're working on um, and much, much more beside. The next episode that is going to be on the 14th of May. And uh, I'm going to be speaking to some of the some more of the successful green councillors who've been elected recently. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to um, the new Green Party council leader in Mid Suffolk, the uh, councillors from places where the Greens have had major success um, and much, much more beside. I think I've got one of the newly elected councillors in Manchester confirmed for that show. I'll be lining up more guests in the coming days. The best way that you can make sure that you don't miss out on that show, which will also include interviews with um, campaigners from People on Planet talking about the Fossil Free Careers campaign. Matt Kennard, who's just recently released a book called Silent Coup about the role of uh, investor state dispute settlements in corporate um, in in undermining democracy and how corporations are undermining democracy across the world. Uh, uh, we'll have a guest from the Personal Solidarity campaign and much, much more, as well as all of our Green Party guests. Uh, if you hit subscribe, you won't miss out on that. So make sure you do hit subscribe. Um, I'm going to come to some comments in the chat and some questions before I run down some final results analysis and then we wrap up. Uh, so Luke Brown, the latest uh, response has just come in uh, into the chat. Uh, Luke has said that they are cancelling their Labour membership today and finally joining the Green Party. Alex Nettle and Rosie Wall have since welcomed them to the Green Party. Uh, I'm sure there is a warm welcome um, from everyone on the show. Um, there was a question earlier in the chat about uh, general elections and how these council results uh, relate to Westminster elections. Uh, I think Zach touched on that a little bit. We didn't get to talk about it in much detail, but uh, just to give you, I guess, a bit of my reflections. Um, there's a couple of really interesting results here that I think do have a clear relationship to Westminster elections. The first is that one in Mid-Suffolk, uh, because, of course, Mid-Suffolk, some of the wards in that council area cover the Waveney Valley constituency, which is one of the Greens' top targets in the next general election, where the party is hoping to take a seat from the Tories. Uh, Adrian Ramsey, the Green Party co-leader, is the candidate there. The fact that the Greens won 24 seats on the council, massive majority there. Just to put that in context, there's only 34 seats on the council altogether. Greens have 24 of them. That's huge. Uh, there are also, I believe, some seats in the East Suffolk Council area that are cover the Wavy Valley constituency. That's really interesting. The fact that there's so many green councillors now covering wards that are in uh, that constituency. I think that bodes well for the Green Party. 
Herefordshire. The Greens did make gains in Herefordshire, um, winning, getting two seats this time round. North Herefordshire is where Ellie Chowns, who was going to be joining us, but sadly couldn't in the end today. I'll hopefully get her on the 14th of May. Um, uh, she's the parliamentary candidate in North Herefordshire. The fact the Greens made some gains there, I think gives you an indication that the Greens still have a strong presence there. However, it's worth pointing out and bearing in mind that the Greens were really, really hoping to gain many, many more. They're hoping to gain somewhere in the region of seven to nine seats. They only gained two, so I'm not sure what that tells us. Um, but there are other places where these results could be interesting for parliamentary seats. I think, though, that the overwhelming thing that these set of elections will do, these record-breaking elections for the Green Party will do, is to plant the seed in people's minds all across the country that they can vote Green. And the extra media coverage, the extra narrative, the extra momentum the Greens have got across the country as a result of them will mean that the Greens will start tricking up in the polls, we'll get a few more media gigs. It means that there's more opportunities for people to hear from Greens and to understand that if you vote for the Green Party, you may well get a Green representative. That, I think, is likely to be the biggest impact when it comes to Westminster elections uh just a couple more comments questions from the chat before i do a final rundown of the results so uh more welcomes sent to luke uh for joining the green party peter mccall a um a life uh, a long-standing friend of bright green uh great to have you on the stream uh says they can't emphasize how brilliant it is to build on the results the greens gained in 2019 those were a real high point in the context of Labour and Tory collapse over Brexit. So it's really well done for the Green Party of England Wales to do so well. Couldn't agree more. John Draper has just told me that the Greens are apparently 224 uh, Greens up um, as well. I quite foolishly made a promise to someone that if we, if the Green Party gained 300 seats in these elections, I would quit smoking, uh, which may have to happen if the results keep coming in like they are. Uh, maybe they're going to round off around that 250 mark. Just to give you a rundown, a final rundown before I let you all leave of the results we've had in so far. So we've had historic gains in this year's elections uh, for the Green Party of England and Wales, the best results they've ever had in pure sheer numbers of Green gains. Uh, over 200 gains have been made. That beats the last record of 198 in 2019. The first ever Green Majority Council has been elected in Mid-Suffolk. The Greens have become the largest party on half a dozen more councils, including in East Suffolk, where there were 11 Green gains, East Hertfordshire, where there were 17 Green gains, in Lewis, where there were eight Green gains, in Warwick, where there are a bunch, I haven't got the numbers written down, um, in other places, to the Forest of Dean, eight Green gains, largest party there. There have been huge gains across the country in uh, towns, cities, villages, all across the country. Um, just to give you a final rundown of the numbers, 12 green gains in Mid-Suffolk, 11 green gains in East Suffolk, um, uh, 17 green gains in East Hertfordshire, 8 gains in Lewis, 4 in Worcester, 3 in South Tyneside, 9, nine green gains in Wealdon, 3 in Sevenoaks, 3 in Leicester, 2 in Norwich, five in Folkestone, eight in the Forest of Dean, two, but maybe more now in Vale of Whitehorse, two in Bradford, two in Exeter, five in Darlington, four in Malvern, four in Stafford, two in Stratford-upon-Avon, four in South Kesteven, um, three in the Wirral, and many, many more besides. Uh, and also um, there'll have been, uh, yeah, many, many more besides. Green's breaking on to... Councils for the first time in Havant, Ribble Valley, Bracknell Forest, North East Derbyshire, uh, the New Forest, Earwash, South End, and many, many more as well. Some bad news. Uh, the Greens have lost control of Brighton Hove Council, lost all their seats on York and lost a few other seats here and there. But overwhelmingly, this is a historic, record-breaking, hugely positive night for the Green Party. And of course, it's been an absolute unmitigated disaster. I've just been told the Tories about to hit 1,000 losses in this election. And let's let's not forget that the last time these seats were up for election in 2019, the, the Tories lost a thousand seats in those two. So in the in the in the in the last two, uh, the last two times these seats were election up for election, the Tories have lost over two thousand seats. That's two thousand fewer Tory councillors. Something that everyone worldwide, including on this stream, can celebrate. I'm going to wrap up very quickly, very soon rather. Um, just a few final bits and pieces. Please do, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. We've got that next live stream coming up on the 14th of May, where we're going to be talking to more Green councillors and um, we're going to be talking to people 
campaigning on the, the the cutting edge of campaigns and so on on the left uh, of the labor movement social movements green party is much much more 14th of may live stream it's an eight hour one it's much longer than this one 10 a.m to 6 p.m brilliant guests already lined up many more to come don't miss out by hitting subscribe like the video it means it'll appear on me in more people's streams final few comments i'll come to at the end so get them in the chat lined up share the stream and if you haven't already, you can follow Bright Green on Twitter at BrightGRN, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash BrightGRN, Instagram at Bright Green Online, um, some other places too. Head to our website, bright-green.org, uh, sign up to our mailing list. I'm probably going to be running the mailing, the um, the live blog for a little bit longer tonight, but I am getting a little sleepy, so it might not be hugely longer. And if you are able to, please do set up a regular donation, bright-green.org forward slash donate. We're not bankrolled by billionaires. We're not bankrolled by big business. We only exist because of you. If you are able to, please do donate, bright-green.org forward slash donate. Link in the, in the description if you are able to. Find a few comments. So Matt Hanley has said that they've sat at work today getting zero work done glued to the bright green elections blog with a stupid big grin on, grin on their face thanks chris for running this and everything else you do at bright green thank you so much matt for tuning into the live blog and tuning into the stream uh lots of people commenting saying that there's been over a thousand tory gains brilliant fantastic news let's all rejoice uh joe lever said something is delicious i'm not sure what it was maybe it was the tory losses maybe it was the green gains maybe it was this stream and john draper said there's now 230 green gains what an election for the Green Party. Record-breaking results. The Tories uh, in free fall. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to leave it there. Catch you on the live stream in a few moments. Not on the live stream, on the live blog in a few moments' time, if I still have the energy within me. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've been Chris Jarvis from Bright Green, and I will see you all very, very soon.